1.33 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 13.33 Andrew Sparrow This is from Column Eastwood, leader of the nationalist SDLP party in Northern Ireland. For months, the SDOLP has been making the case that the only way to avoid a hard border and a hard Brexit on the island of Ireland is to maintain membership of the single market and the customs union. However you want to label it, the end result must be the same. Reports today that the UK could concede the principle that there must be continued regulatory alignment with the rules of the single market and the customs union across Ireland, particularly in areas of north-south cooperation is a positive move. The Brexit negotiations must be driven by the best interests of people on these islands, not by narrow isolationist ideology. All steps must be taken to protect the North's economy, our political progress and the terms of the Good Friday Agreement. That has long been a position of the European Union. It is welcome that the British government now seems to be accepting that position. The DUP now must move to act in Northern Ireland's interest, not simply serve their own interests. That's all from me for today. My colleague Nicholas Lawson is now taking over. Facebook, Twitter, Google Plus 1.26 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 13.26 Jessica L. got at the meeting for backbench Conservative MPs with the Prime Minister's Chief of Staff Gavin Barwell and Brexit Minister Steve Baker. Several MPs said they were alarmed by the earlier leaked statements. Theresa Villiers, the Brexit-backing former Northern Ireland Secretary, asked the question up front, if alignment was a possibility, but sources said the reply was non-committal. The influential Brexiteer Jacob Rees-Mogg said that Tory MPs would not allow the regulation even of Northern Ireland to be aligned with the EU. We cannot align the regulation of one part of the United Kingdom with the European Union. If we aligned the whole of the United Kingdom then we haven't left the European Union so there is a logical impossibility of doing what the Irish government proposes, he told reporters outside the meeting of backbench Conservative MPs. Rees-Mogg said the DUP and the Conservative Party were in total agreement. He said Gavin Barwell made it absolutely clear. As he said, we are not going to trade on distinctions between Great Britain and Northern Ireland. That would be completely intolerable. We are the Conservative and Unionist Party after all. Asked if MPs had been told that different regulatory systems were possible, Rees-Mogg said I don't think that could possibly happen. The government doesn't have a majority. The suggestions so far are coming from the Irish government. The Irish government leaked a document which ISNT the case, as far as I can tell. It has caused everybody to be concerned. It was reported as if it was true, and now it turns out it was propaganda from the Irish government. Former Minister Anna Sobri said the simple solution would be for the UK to stay in the single market and the customs union. She said nobody could want one part of our country to have a different set of rules to another part of the country. On that, Jacob and I are absolutely agreed. The sense in the room is that nobody wanted that. If we stay in the single market, that solves the problem. Facebook, Twitter, Google Plus 1.20 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 13.20 Facebook, Twitter, Google Plus 1.14 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 13.14 Sturgeon says Scotland will lose out if Northern Ireland gets special Brexit deal. Severin Carol Nicola Sturgeon, Scotland's first minister, has said that allowing Northern Ireland to become the only part of the UK with special access to the single market would undermine the Scottish economy, and underlined the case for Scottish independence. Northern Ireland's economy is substantially weaker than Scotland's but Sturgeon said in a lengthy statement that an open borders deal with Ireland would put Scotland at a double disadvantage on jobs and investment, by boosting Northern Ireland's trade and business links at the expense of other parts of the UK. Sturgeon insisted an Irish deal made all the UK government's arguments against the same for Scotland redundant. Indeed, if Northern Ireland is effectively kept in the single market it makes it all the more vital for Scotland's national and economic interests that we are too, she said. Nicola Sturgeon. Photograph David Johnstone Daily Record par Facebook Twitter Google Plus 1.05 p.m. Eastern Standard Time 13.05 Aradka says UK not to be in a position to conclude what was agreed earlier Facebook Twitter Google Plus 12.57 p.m. Eastern Standard Time 12.57 Viradka says things broke down, became problematic during lunch in Brussels Lisa O'Carroll Leo Viradka, the Irish Taoiseach, has said he is disappointed and surprised that the agreement reached between Ireland and Britain this morning was no longer acceptable to Theresa May. He refused to ascribe blame on the Democratic Unionist Party for scuppering today's announcement and said he was happy to give the Prime Minister more time to get domestic support for the proposal, which was agreed just before May sat down to lunch with Jean-Claude Juncker in Brussels.
I don't think it would be helpful for me to ascribe any blame. It is evident that things broke down, became problematic during the lunch in Brussels, Varadkar told reporters. His deputy foreign minister had gone on national radio just after 1 p.m. to announce that a deal was close with a positive statement for the country from the Taoiseach planned for the afternoon. But the deal started to go sour just before a 2.30 p.m. press conference at government buildings, when in a hastily arranged press briefing the DUP made it clear it would not tolerate any deal that separated it from the United Kingdom with party leader Arlene Foster accusing Viradka of trying to stitch up a deal unilaterally. Varadkar said he believed this was a hitch and everything could still be salvaged. We believe that the agreement stands and we believe the Prime Minister needs a bit more time and we are happy to allow here more time if that is what is needed, there is plenty of time between now and the 14th of December, he said. The text was agreed this morning, we haven't received any requests of changes to that, said Varadkar. We were happy to accept, convergence, no divergence or regulatory alignment, all those things essentially mean the same thing. If we can't reach an agreement by the 14th of December then we can move on to phase two of negotiations. But Ireland wants to move on to phase two. We want to talk about the transition period, because that's what people need to make plan. Leo Varadka. Photograph Sky News updated at 1.06 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Facebook, Twitter, Google Plus 12.52 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. 12.52 Henry MacDonald. Some of the questions regarding the DUP that were being bold to Irish Prime Minister Leo Varadka are perplexing. One in particular asked if the hard men of the DUP had leaned on Arlene Foster and forced her hand to reject the Irish backed deal for Northern Ireland. C 5.33 p.m. This questioning seriously misunderstands the nature of the DUP and its politics. Only a fortnight ago, Foster told her party conference the DUP would not back any plan from Brussels that might, in her mind, decouple Northern Ireland from the rest of the UK. What is clear this evening is that the DUP in unison, and their old rival Lord Trimble once the leader of the Ulster Unionists, now a Tory peer regarded the deal as minted in Dublin exclusively. There is no evidence of any divergence of opinion on the matter from within the DUP. They are united as are all strands of unionism tonight in opposition to the proposal. Updated at 12.53 p.m. Eastern Standard Time Facebook Twitter Google Plus 12.49 p.m. Eastern Standard Time 12.49 Irish p.m. says May agreed a deal she could not subsequently deliver Facebook Twitter Google Plus 12.40 p.m. Eastern Standard Time 12.40 Facebook Twitter Google Plus 12.33 p.m. Eastern Standard Time 12.33 Facebook Twitter Google Plus